20 years of mediocre performance, one single trophy, and little to no talent stemming from their academy system, it's a miracle West Ham are even still in business. It's no surprise that the football legacy of West Ham is a story of averageness. However, I bring good news to fans when I answer that a new era of the Hammers is among us, and I think we're going to see a historic rise from this new Hammers squad. But how? Allow me to explain how West Ham have transformed their team. If we look back as far as we can see, West Ham have been in the middle of the pack every season of the Premier League, but it isn't until recently that they're reviving their project. The story really starts back in the 2022-23 season. David Moyes and West Ham had just come off what was deemed to be a successful 2021-22 campaign, placing 7th in the league and earning Conference League qualification for the first time in club history. But I've got to say we've had a, an enormous climb from where we were. Relegation candidates to you know, missing out on, on Champions League by 3 points gives you an idea how well we've done. But Domestically in the 2022-23 season, there was not much to celebrate. 14th place in the Premier League, along with getting knocked out of the FA Cup in the 5th round and the EFL Cup in the 3rd round. This was one of the worst seasons ever under David Moyes. You would think with a performance like this, David Moyes would be instantly sacked. But there was one thing that kept him in the job. He was cooking up in the Conference League. They flew through the group stage going undefeated as they moved into the knockouts. West Ham became one of the most informed teams in the world. I never thought I would ever say that. To be fair, they did start their round of 16 with this random team from Cyprus. They moved on to beat Ghent in the quarterfinals, where they had a stellar performance in the second leg. Yeah, it's a brilliant achievement by, by all the players. You know, for us to do it two years in a row, get to semi-final European competition is, is uh, I look, it's special. It really is, you know. West Ham then moseyed on through the semi-final by taking on Easy Alkmaar, beating them pretty easily 3-1 on aggregate. The final was against Florentina, and you should probably guess that West Ham won the final. <laughs> This was West Ham's first European trophy since 1965 and it was the only real reason that David Moyes remained at West Ham for the next season. I hate to say it, but this is exactly where things started to go wrong. You see, even though West Ham won a trophy last year, they did not do so well in the Premier League. And considering that they sold off players such as Declan Rice and Gianluca Scamacca, who were decently important players in this team, they were in a bit of a sticky situation. And so in an effort to fill the holes in their squad, they signed what would be probably the most important players to their project in the coming years. Those players are Edson Alvarez from Ajax, who is criminally underrated, James Ward-Prowse from Southampton, and Mohamed Kudus from Ajax. All these players totaled around 103.4 million euros, making this transfer one of the better ones West Ham had. But still, their predictions for the season were borderline disrespectful. 15th? A team that I think might struggle is West Ham. Yeah, for me, it was West Ham. I feel like they could get relegated, relegated as well. This is, this is one of my shocker, could be relegated teams. Clearly, they were expected to be in the bottom half of the table, and when the season began, they proved everybody wrong. They didn't lose their first four matches of the season, and after a month had gone by, West Ham were sitting in fourth place in the table. However, things quickly turned around and West Ham started to plunder down. They started to lose match after match, and the chemistry of the team, along with the manager, started to deteriorate. They're not enjoying watching the kind of football that is being served up at the moment. As the club's thinking goes, and now is the right time to appoint a new head coach. David Moyes started to have an absolute stinker and the West Ham fans wanted him gone. At this point, it had been over six years that he was in charge of the first team and fast forward to the end of the 2023-24 season, he had accomplished absolutely nothing. They finished ninth place and did not have much to show for and after a mutual agreement, David Moyes parted with the club. And what better to manager to fill a spot other than the one and only Pep Guardiola? I'm just kidding, it was Julian Lopetegui. Lopetegui's football reputation isn't the best. He did win Europa League at Sevilla and more recently he managed Wolverhampton Wanderers but he didn't find any exceptional success there and actually even left Wolves after only a year. He then took 12 months off of work, rejecting many offers, some even from the Saudi league, before he ended up joining West Ham. The managerial system behind Lopetegui compared to David Moyes is almost the complete opposite. Moyes tends to favor a more defensive and pragmatic approach, where Lopetegui looks to use more gang and present and possession-based game. His style is much more modern. But the club were absolutely delighted with this appointment. They said the appointment marks the next step in West Ham's new and growing football strategy. And there's some... As soon as Lopetegui got into office, he started to make some major changes. He first got rid of Ben Rama permanently, for a decent price of around 14.4 million euros. He then sold off Flynn Downs and Cairo for around 30 million combined, which gave West Ham a decent bit of cash to spend. For a little while now, West Ham had been struggling to find a consistent quality striker. They had Mikel Antonio, but as of this season, he had been struggling with personal issues, so he was in and out of form. Denny Ings was pretty meh, and he left the club. So West Ham were left with no real striker for the 2024-25 season, until one big, bulky German man started balling out. A done deal. West Ham United have signed Nicholas Fulkrug, the German striker from Borussia Dortmund. He signed a four-year deal. He had scored 15 goals in the Bundesliga last season, and two goals in the Euros this past summer. Fulkrug isn't too quick, but he's good in the air and fairly effective at converting chances. He's an excellent replacement for Antonio, and he would be key heading into the 2024-25 campaign. The next piece of the team Lopetegui was after fixing was none other than the wingers. Saeed Benrahma was West Ham's most creative and talented player on the outside flanks, so with him gone there was something really lacking. That was until they made the signing for Crescencio Somerville. 
Not many know how to actually pronounce his name, but at 22, he was a quality player. For Leeds United last season, we saw him create 21 goals in all competitions from the wing, and he won the Championship Player of the Year. He is great at creating chances, so I'm sure we'll see some link up between him and Fulkrug. He just has so much talent to offer, and it will be shown in the coming months. Lopetegui also brought in a much younger winger. He goes by the name Luis Gorheme from Palmeiras. I again butchered this name. West Ham paid 23 million euros and at 18 years old he was a huge talent coming out of Brazil. This signing is a little bit more risky in my opinion but I definitely see him playing opposite of Somerville but as a second string to Jared Bowen. He doesn't have a ton of experience at the top level in Brazil only playing 18 matches and scoring one goal this season but under Lopetegui there's a lot of potential for him to turn into a top player for the Hammers. The final piece of this team that needed to be upgraded was the center halves. Ogbonna had just left the club and they sold Tilo Kera. So to replace him they brought in Jean-Claire Todibo on loan from OGC Nice. He's 28 years old with tons of of experience in Ligue 1, and he should fit in nicely. Lopetegui also signed another 27-year-old center back, Max Kilman from Wolves. He had previously played under Lopetegui when he was managing Wolves. He's a very physical center back and he's pretty good on the ball. This signing cost him almost 50 million euros and is definitely one of those signings that I thought they overpaid. His entire career had been spent at Wolves and not many other clubs were fighting for a signature, so the signing was pretty easy to make. In my opinion, he's a nice touch to the rebuild. He's a complete center back and is a much needed leader in this West Ham team, so he'll be playing a frequent role under Lopetegui. The last transfer he made was another strange one, Aaron Wambasaka. He'd been very underwhelming during his entire United stay, but I think he will transform under Lopetegui. And to see him slide into a team where there's not going to be as much pressure to perform, it'll be interesting to see. Now, this might just seem like transfers, and you're probably wondering why this West team even has a chance at getting top 4 this season. And the answer is, not so simple. You can see that in preseason, things got pretty rough for West Ham, only winning one match against a National League side. But preseason football is a completely different game. A couple weeks ago, Celtic beat City and Chelsea. It's very random. West Ham was also missing a ton of players at the Euros, so they were nowhere near full strength. So as the Premier League looks to return and West Ham now have depth in almost every single position, what can we actually expect from the Hammers? They have been great in the transfer window, they have a new manager, but there's still a lot of doubts surrounding this West Ham side. So, West Ham, West Ham ninth. I feel like they've made some good signings. I, I couldn't tell you who out off the top of my head. But no, I'm going to say West Ham finish eight, but I do understand there is a big rebuild process. I'm going to put my neck on the line here and say West Ham won't finish worse than ninth. But let's say it's going to be ninth or higher. But I beg to differ when it comes to pushing for European football. They were able to do it two years ago with a much weaker team and under David Moyes this ancient football tactics. So comparatively, they should do much better. They're also not playing any European football this year, which means the players are going to be more rested and the potential for a lot of injuries comes down. So I think the new setup plus the additional rest and depth in the team makes West Ham a serious top four contender, if not top six. If you ask me personally, I see West Ham finishing sixth or seventh in the league this year, but we'll have to wait and see. I want to hear your thoughts, so let me know in the comments down below where you see West Ham finishing. As always, make sure to drop a like while you're down there, and I'll see you guys in the next video.